All right, so that little exercise with the computer hopefully persuaded everyone that the frequency of the sound waves that come out when I strike the open string at 80 hertz, and if I uh, pinch the string halfway up, so the string is now half its original length, we've got a higher note, and the frequency was double, it was about 160 hertz. And both of those notes are called E in uh, traditional Western music because that's what separates uh, different notes, different octaves, which have the same name, they are all separated by being double the frequency of each other. So let's see how many notes E we could find on the guitar. We start with the open string E, 80 hertz, half the string, 160 hertz, that's also E. And then we can go up the sort of do, re, mi scale, if you will, and find the next E, right? frequency of this one, so 80, 160, now what's 2 times that? It's 2 times 160, 320, so this must be 320 hertz, and actually that's the same note as the top E string, sounds different but it's the same note with the same frequency, we can halve that one again, and we can now go up to what's that going to be, 640 hertz, so that's the top E on the guitar, so we have 1, 2, Four E's, right? And they're all separated by doubling the frequency to get one to the next. Now, why is that? Why is it that halving the length of the string, or halving the length of the string and changing the thickness of the string, has this interesting effect? So we're going to look at what's actually making the sound. Right? When we pluck the string, the string vibrates back and forth. Now, another way of looking at it is say that a wave propagates back and forth up and down the string, and every time it does so takes the air and makes a sound wave come out. So a good place to start might be to ask, well how fast does uh, a wave propagate on a string? Now we're gonna, I'm going to give you something that we're not going to derive, it's very tricky to derive. I'm going to tell you that the, uh, the speed at which a wave travels along a stretched string is equal to the square root of the tension in that string, that's how tightly it is stretched, divided by m, the mass per unit length of the string heavy in the string is. So think of your different guitar strings, right, the six of them, they're all about the same length, they're all under about the same tension, but they're very different masses, right, some are heavier than others, and that accounts for the fact that they can strike with different notes. Now, what about that wave that travels up and down the string? Well, if we just make a very sort of simple diagram of the length of the guitar string held at each end, when it oscillates back and forth, so it's a shape like this, and it quickly moves and assumes a shape like this, and it does it a certain number of times per second. A number of times per second is called the frequency. This is the length here, the length of the string, L. Now this shape here is only half a wavelength, right? If I wanted to see a whole wave, peak to peak, I could extend it out and come back to where I started. And in the meantime, my length that the wave has traveled is now 2 L. Okay, that's the distance the wave travels in one complete cycle. And of course, the string is only this long, so what actually happens is the wave comes across the string, it bounces back, and it travels the whole distance that way. But it still travels 2L. So that's how far it goes in one oscillation period. Now, how far something goes in a certain amount of time is another common name. It's the speed or the velocity. So we can write another equation for the velocity. Velocity or speed is always distance divided by time. Now, how far did that wave travel? Travel 2L. How long can it take? So one oscillation period, or one over the frequency, right? One over the frequency is the oscillation period. So just say 2L over P, or P is the oscillation period, which is the same thing, saying 2L times F. So now we've got two equations here and here. And they're describing the same thing, the speed of the wave on the string. Now we don't actually care about the speed of the wave on the string different for all the different strings, different for any guitar you pick up if the strings are made out of different materials. But what is not different for all different guitars is the notes you get. They all make the same notes, the same frequency. So we don't really care about B, but we have these two equations, so we can put them together and eliminate it, and in the process put together everything we know and everything we're interested in. So let's do that now. So I'm going to take the first equation, make it equal to the second equation, and then, you know, see what we get from there. So 2L times F equals square root of t over f. I can rearrange my f the subject of the formula. I'm sure you all can as well. 
change the sine, change the sine in two L's on the top of the left, go to the bottom on the right. So, here we have it. Put a cloud around it to show that it's an important equation. So you can see from the equation that if I stay on one string, all I can change is L, right, the length. I can't change the tension, can't change the mass of the string. But I can change the length. So if I halve L, I double F. If I reduce L by a factor of 3, so it's a third L, I get 3F, and so on up. So if I strike my string, I get a fundamental, 80 hertz. If I strike it halfway up, I should get double the frequency, 160 hertz. If I go a third of the way up, this is a little tricky one. So what's one third of the length of this string? It turns out to be right here. If I strike there, I should get three times the frequency. Oops, wrong one. I should get three times the frequency if I get the right string. Now, here's a good question. What if I go to three times the frequency and then double the length of the string? Right? So this is the third of the length of the whole string. So I could double it and it'd still be on the string. So if I could do that, just go from there up, brings me there, which is now two thirds length of the string, right? It's two thirds of this whole thing, or it's a third times two. Let's listen to that. Again, they sound the same note, even though they're not the same frequency. That interval, it turns out, is called a fifth reasons I never understood until very recently when I started learning the guitar, and here's why it is. If I go up the, no up the scale, starting with the open string, and I count the different notes, here's the first one, E, here's the next one up, F, G, A, B, and that's the fifth one, right? One, two, three, four, five. So that's called the fifth. I never understood why it's called the fifth before because it's the third length of the string. Okay, right, figure. Let's see. I can't go to four times because I don't I run out of room. But I can go to a quarter up here. That comes there to right here. Right, there's a quarter of the length of the string. So if I there's a quarter, takes me to a half, takes me to three quarters, so just off the end of the fretboard takes me out down to the bottom. So that's a quarter of the length of the string. So I've got three quarters of the original length here. If I strike that note you would find that it had the same relationship. It's three quarters of the length of the string, so the frequency will be four thirds of the original frequency. Right? So if I go half L, I get two F. Third L gives me three F. Three quarters L gives me four thirds F. You see how to see where this is going? One fifth of L would give me five F. And so that argument goes all the way up the scale, and in fact that is how the, uh, the scale that Western music actually uses is, was, was in fact developed. All the notes on the scale are very, very close to those relationships. 